Hi, it's Derek again from Tomcat Cash Training, and in this video I'm going to show you how to recharge an expansion vessel. So, let's get on with it. The boiler you're going to check the expansion vessel in is this 600, because it's the easiest one out of this lot to do, basically because it's on the top here, easiest for me to show. So I have got a clue if there's any air, nitrogen or whatever's in this, so uh, first of all let's uh, find out. So it's zero on my gauge, on my little pump. So let's connect it on. I couldn't hear anything come out. And according to my pump, there is zero. There's nothing in this expansion vessel. Where we need to pump it up, what we need to do is, we need to, because when your system's drained, this is when you'd be checking this and you'd be setting this to your, or in our situation, the 0.7. So that's how we would be doing that, okay? Now, there's no water or anything in this, but if you are checking them when you have isolated the bottom, you drain out the water, because you can't check the expansion vessel with water in it, and then you open the pressure relief valve and you keep that open and while you're putting the air in. So that's one of the that's the difference between when there's water in the system and when there's no water. So right at the very beginning, this is how we'll be checking it, we don't have to hold anything open. We just need to fill it to this 0.7 of a bar. So there we go, we've got 0.7 of a bar in our expansion vessel. So let's put our 0.7 in that expansion vessel. We would then fill our system, okay, and then we would check it. But we need 0.7 plus 2, so it would be uh, 0.9 then. So we will be putting 0.9 of a bar in. So let's put 0.9 in. And that's our preset at point 0.9 in our system when it's cold. So we've checked and set our expansion vessel. It's as simple as that. Does anybody ever check their expansion vessel before they fill them up or after they fill them up? I don't think so, we just rely on the manufacturer. And I know Baxi send theirs out at a bar. They also say in their manufacturer's instructions how many litres of water you can fill the system to because what size is it? It's an expansion vessel. It's a seven litre. So this has got seven litres in there. So if this had 150 litres of water in there, it won't be big enough, would it? Because we need eight litre eight liter expansion vessel. So you can see the expansion vessels are set for what they expect the systems to be on, even though this is a, I think it's a 24 kilowatt? No, it's a 30, it's a 30 kilowatt, it's a 630. So this is a 30 kilowatt, but they expect the heating system to be incredibly low, because they've only give you 7 litre expansion vessel. So, that's how we fill the expansion vessels up. And once you've disconnected your pump, I always check the Schrader valve with leak detection fluid to make sure it's not leaking before you put your cap back on. Now let's finish off with talking about things that can actually go wrong with these expansion vessels. First of all, you press that Schrader valve in and water comes out and not air, then your diaphragm's gone and water is transferred over to the other side and it needs replacing. If you press the Schrader valve down and just no air comes out, nothing, then there's a possibility that it's just lost its air through the Schrader valve and it could just need either topping up or the Schrader valve replacing. Remember, if you want to check this to see whether it's leaking or not, you can use leak detection fluid and they're dead easy to change as well. You just need a little extraction tool which you can buy from a bike shop. Because remember, it's the same thing as what's on your bicycle tire. 
Now, that's the main things what can go wrong with them. But what about, what would your boiler be doing to tell you that this expansion vessel's gone? Well, if you've got water coming out of your PRV, your pressure relief valve, then it could be every chance that there's something wrong with your expansion vessel. Or the PRV could be broken. Or you could have left your filling loop on and it could be the filling loop passing. But always check your expansion vessel to make sure that it's still charged. But remember, you can't get an accurate reading unless the boiler is empty of water. And that is the end of this video on these expansion vessels. So, if you've liked this video, why don't you give it that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. But remember, be respectful. If you're not subscribed to our channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading these videos. You know, Mondays and Wednesdays. All I've got left to say is, thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.